All right, E3 and Summer Game Fest are right around the corner. And now we've got a schedule. Let's figure out exactly what we're gonna cover. You might not have noticed, but things look a little different around here. Wait, I know it looks similar, but it's not quite the same. I'm shooting on green screen because here in Nevada, the temperature in my garage where the studio was, was well over 100 degrees and the computer and electronics just couldn't take it. So I'm back to green screen. But the cool thing about this new setup is that it allows me to have a more casual conversation, less editing, less freneticness, and more just chill. Let's just chill and talk about the daily news of video gaming and tech. So what I'm going to do going forward is I'm going to rely less on the shorts. I'm not saying I'm not going to do shorts, but I'm going to rely less on those. And I'm going to save the editing style and the longer format pieces that you saw before for very special features. But in the meantime, let's figure this out. I don't know what Jeff is doing for that kickoff night. It looks like there's going to be lots of cool performances. And if you guys want me to cover that, I can you know do some kind of... Um, I'm not going to commit to a live show because I'm not confident yet in either the tech or my ability to keep you guys entertained for that whole time. But I would love to do content where I'm able to put it up quickly talking about the events that you just watched. I would love to get to the point where we're watching this stuff together, but um, not yet. I'm not quite there yet. And I'm still working on the Discord channel, so we'll see. So it looks like the first day, if you guys want me to cover the 10th for the kickoff live, we can do that. There's the Netflix Geek Week, which is really interesting because there have been rumors that Netflix is interested in entering the gaming space. And, you know, if, come to think about it, my dream scenario would be something like Netflix hooking up with Stadia, where Stadia offers its services and combines with Netflix, where you get very high end AAA games and indie games all through your Netflix subscription. Stadia has by far the best cloud streaming game service, and nobody is even close. So yeah, that kind of dream team would be interesting. I don't see Netflix getting into original games. I see them partnering with somebody, but um, original gaming content, I don't know. Ubisoft Forward. Now that's something that I'm sure you guys are gonna wanna know about. Uh, we already know that there will be no Prince of Persia, which was a surprise. I thought this would be the year that we'd be seeing that. Um, I'm pretty sure we aren't gonna see any new Assassin's Creed. Valhalla was a big thing for them. We may be seeing some substantial DLC, maybe Rainbow Six, maybe something new. They said that we're not going to see anything for the Division 2 either. So the Ubisoft is a real big mystery. I'd love to see what they're doing. So maybe that'll be one of the ones that I cover. Devolver Digital, I just want to see 12 minutes. Frankly, I just want to see 12 minutes. Whatever else they show is just icing on the cake. But I'm there for 12 minutes. I'm going to cover that regardless. So you can expect content then. And hopefully I'll have my media situation set up where at that point, uh, we can do something live. Maybe I have the Discord channel set up then. Ah, here's the big one. The Xbox Bethesda Game Showcase. Look, I I am 95% sure that we're not gonna get Starfield this year. I don't have anything, I don't have any information that you don't have, but just my gut tells me that we're going to see lots of gameplay for Starfield. We might get one of those surprise available now demos uh, or alpha demos, but I don't think the game is gonna release this year. I think it's coming out early next year, but I could be eating crow. This could be a really big thing for Microsoft. Uh, I'm excited for Starfield because we really don't know what it is. We, If it is a No Man's Sky meets Fallout, I am all the way in day one. Even if it wasn't on Game Pass, I would buy it. That is my jam all the way. But um, we don't really know what it is. We don't. We know it's a single player, space oriented game. We don't know I'm pretty sure there are no multiplayer elements in it. So I'm very excited to see what this is. If I had to put money down, but I'm terrible at gambling and I always lose. But if I had to put money down on this, I don't think it's coming out this year, which means it probably is coming out this year. Who you are? Breathe. No, you don't get to tell me what to do. You don't get to tell me anything. We're, are you even listening? I really want to take a moment to try to explain why I think Halo is so special in the gaming space. Because really, there is nothing like Halo. And I don't mean just as far as spectacle or its place in history, but when you look at how Halo handles first person gameplay, there's a sense of both exploration on the vertical and expansively on the horizontal, right? So you have these huge sandboxes that I mean, does anybody, maybe Crisis, does any other first person game give you the amount of freedom and complex AI 
that is mixed together uh, where you have so many different enemy types and so many different options and so many different ways to handle a particular situation while also giving you the feeling of a big team battle. It's not scripted, not as much as what we've come to expect in modern day shooters. It's just something really, really special. And I love Halo. I mean, I'm al I've always loved Halo. I love that Halo has taken little bits and pieces of other games. They've tried, you know, aim down, you know, aim down sights. They tried other little things from other games, but Halo still feels distinctively Halo. And I know that Halo Five and Four, frankly, didn't resonate like people want the uh, like the Bungie games ones did. But there's something, there's something that I, something about Halo, and I've always wanted to see what Halo feels like as you expand. The universe. I want to see what happens when you take Master Chief and you take that rock solid gameplay and you take that lore and you just open up the universe. Frankly, I would have played it after last year's reveal. I was excited from what I saw. Yeah, okay, it didn't look my blow. It wasn't the best showcase of the greatest looking game ever made, but I thought it looked fantastic. I was excited to see this open world. I was excited to be able to get back and fly a ghost and get back on the ground and get into a warthog again and just have the freedom to roam and blast in that environment. And I just don't think anybody does first person shooter sandbox. Nobody does it quite as well as Halo. There is a rumor that there is the Final Fantasy Origins game, which is the action based sequel or prequel to the very first Final Fantasy game. And supposedly they're teaming up with Team Ninja. I love Team Ninja, at least the original Itagaki-san games. But I'm very curious as to what a Team Ninja uh, slash Ninja Gaiden slash Neo game with Squaresoft production values. I'm really curious to see what that could look like. So I fully expect to see that. Uh, beyond that, I think Tomb Raider might be done for a while. They've shown no inclination to do anything with Legacy of Kain. Uh, so maybe there's a new IP coming. I don't know, but you know, at the very least, we don't know what to expect. WB. I'm a little disappointed. Not that Back for Blood isn't amazing. I am actually very excited to see that game. I'm a little envious that right now it's only for PC, but I fully expect that we'll see soon some type of console announcement. So I know I gushed over Halo earlier, but the game that resonates with me most as a first person multiplayer game is by far and away Left 4 Dead. There have been lots of imitators who have tried to fill the gap of Left 4 Dead. Uh, but the thing that Left 4 Dead does so incredibly well is offer a sense of atmosphere along with giving a ton of personality to your co-op partners. Again, World War Z, uh, there have been some Call of Duty modes that tried this. Uh, I can't think of that game, the D&D game, the Dungeons and Dragons game that tries to capture the feel of Left 4 Dead. There is nothing that feels as good, that feels as frightening, that feels as polished, as well put together as Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2. So yeah, Back 4 Blood is going to be amazing and that is going to be, well, not just the highlight of the showcase, it's all they're going to show at the showcase. I'm disappointed that we're not gonna see Gotham Knights. I wasn't expecting uh, the Suicide Squad game, not yet. It's a little too early for that. But the Gotham Knights game, I kind of expected to see at the C3. I'm all for co-op experiences. Anyone who knows me, who has ever played with me knows that I like co-op more than competitive. And Gotham Knights is all about taking your favorite superheroes, well, in the Batverse, and just going through basically an Arkham City-like world and having at it. So I was really excited about that, but I guess we're gonna hold off on that until maybe there's a DC event coming up later in the year or maybe next year. Either way, a little disappointing, but I will be there to cover that. If you guys want, let me know in the comments if you wanna see me cover that event. Listen, if you guys enjoy this type of content, let me know. I'm going to try to be on every day during E3, but more importantly, if you have the Clubhouse app, download it, check it out. There is a thriving, huge gaming community on Clubhouse. There's a lot of noise and junk there too, but you will be surprised at how much of the gaming industry is on the Clubhouse app. You're not locked to Android or iOS, 
Clubhouse is in whatever device you have. I don't make a penny off of it. There's no money to be made in Clubhouse. It's just a really cool app to connect people. And I spend a lot of time conversing with the industry, conversing with gamers, just enjoying Clubhouse. So if you have any inclination, check out Clubhouse, get an invite from a friend, it's pretty open, but I hope to see you guys on Clubhouse and I will be starting that Discord channel soon. If you like this content, like and subscribe on the channel, hit that notification bell, let you know whenever I put out new content and next week is gonna be crazy, but I'm going to try to hit you guys up every single day as best I can. Maybe multiple times a day, but don't hold me to it. I'm excited about doing the C3, but more importantly, I'm excited about hanging out with you guys. You guys are talking in the comments. I'm engaging with you at every opportunity that I can, and I'm excited. Summer Game Fest, E3, let's go. See you guys next week.